And a happy Monday, everyone. A blackout, blockbuster ads, Beyonce, Super Bowl 47, breaking all kinds of records on the field with the Ravens taking down the 49ers. And for all that star power, Alicia Keys, Jennifer Hudson, Bay, as she is affectionately known. And an exclusive from Facebook last night. Take a look at some of these numbers here. These were the top moments from the game. Ravens win the Super Bowl. Beyonce performing at the halftime show, and lights go down at the Super Bowl. The top moments from last night as everyone is recovering today, including Entertainment Weekly writer Darren Franich. Glued to the set, one eye on the game, the other eye on Beyonce, obviously, when she came out last night. I mean, the game was huge, 34-31. Some great moments. But a lot of people were waiting for Beyonce. I didn't know she delivered a game last night. Actually, I, I, I was mainly focused on the Beyonce performance. I mean, you know, just what what a sheer spectacle that was. She came out. She completely owned it. It's funny how she almost came in as an underdog, weirdly, on account of the whole lip sync controversy. And so she clearly just felt the need to just completely blow everyone's minds. The 49ers and, were opening for her last night. Ex exactly. And unfortunately, yeah. they and then, couldn't and then, close for her either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right, but I want to go to Alicia Keys. How'd you do for the Smart Star Spangled Banner? Uh, Easier I mean, to say. You know, Alicia Keys and that piano, I don't know if there's anything that, like, they can't do when they're together. Right. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, th that was a really kind of, like, wonderful moment. But in some ways, you know, she kind of had the toughest job because she had to go right in between Beyonce on one side and then Jennifer Hudson and the Sandy Hook Choir on the other side. I mean, that was a, a very, like, powerful moment, them all singing America the Beautiful together. That was. Jennifer Hudson, I mean, she delivered probably one of the strongest performances she's had. Yeah, I, 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 absolutely. And, I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's a cool time for her because she's, like, she's a about to be on on the show Smash. So I'm, I'm sure there, there was some theory there about raising her uh, her um, uh, you know putting her out there a little bit, but just her and the kids together. I mean, that that, that was a cry-inducing thing for everyone. I'm sure. Yeah, a, a nice way to start the game. Yeah, a great way to start the game. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not for the 49ers. Not a great way to end <laughs> the game. And obviously, the other big battle is the fact that there were. Brothers yep. in hot competition yep. last yep. night. I mean, it, 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 it's such a great story. I'm a I'm a lifelong Niners fan, but you know, just you have to and love yet the you're fact. donning purple. And yet I'm donning purple. Well, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. kind of give it out. Yeah, to, to, loyalty to the runs real today. deep with you, Darren. But uh, you, you know, I I love the fact that you know Jim Harbaugh and John Harbaugh, two brothers, they're so close in age, couldn't be more different. By all accounts, John Harbaugh, lovely man, caring man. Jim Harbaugh is a machine, an, an uncaring <laughs> robot. Um, so yeah, like you know, what a what a great showdown that was. I I, 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 I love to. Who will play them in the movie of last night? And there probably will be one coming up, and we'll have to look for the review in Entertainment Weekly. Absolutely. Obviously, the other big battle last night was not just on the gridiron or to see who was gonna who was gonna out diva between Beyonce, Alicia Keys, and Jennifer Hudson, but the ads, huge last night. 50 new ones, almost $4 million a pop, all to get our attention. On Facebook, here's some of the big moments, the biggest ones, uh, when those ads aired. This is essentially the way that the metrics are done. When Dodge Ram ran the God Made a Farmer ad, the mentions on Facebook when that ad aired went up 151,000% when they aired. Taco Bell, Viva Young, mentions of Taco Bell, that jumped 141,000, and Tide, the Miracle Stain, mentions of Tide, that went up 132,000 again when those ads aired. Crazy. So which ones scored, which ones fumbled? We have Matt Miller from the Association of Independent Commercial Producers. Matt, thanks for being with us today. Good clear to eyed. Here. Were we entertained <laughs> last night? We were entertained. There were some really, really great ads that, that had a lot of different messages. Interestingly enough, some of the more serious, heartfelt pieces won over the slapstick humor. We didn't have the flagellant horses going on this time. We had some real Americana, as you mentioned, and we had some pieces that did really resonate with, with the viewers. What about the, what was the strongest? I'll tell me personally, the Jeep commercial with the Oprah voiceover, that was like, a, that brought you to tears. You know, that was obviously, you know, look, it doesn't get more American right. than Jeep, Oprah, and the military. And, you know, you, you sort of can't lose that way. Um, it felt like it could have gone further, okay. and it could have had a little more of a heartfelt moment. We've seen that before. We've seen Anheuser-Busch a few years ago had the applause ad where the military walked through the airport, right, and they got right. standing up, and it, you really felt it in your heart. That same emotion wasn't there with this ad, but but let's face it, it still had that Americana and a very important message for our troops showing support. So I want to get your thoughts on the fact that Samsung did an ad with Seth Rogen and Paul Rudd about the creation of the ad. I want to take a look at that one. I have LeBron James. Hi, you. Bron. You in on Samsung? Yeah, totally. Maybe I'll do a cameo on the tablet or something. That's awesome. Along with LeBron James. Man, that's incredible. That's you get LeBron so James, you got the next big thing. You don't even need anybody else. <laughs> that's right. We don't. We don't. 
Don't need anyone else. <laughs> I've got it. I'm yeah. having breakfast with LeBron's kids. Dude, why would you be with LeBron's kids? We're friends. It's a great ad. <laughs> Score? You know, it's a great ad. And, you know, it, it's a little inside pool for the entertainment people and for the ad business. But still, it's going to score because you have such high star power there, right? You have some great people. I don't know, you know, LeBron, you throw him in there also. But the story was great, right? It was a two-minute story. The teaser that came out earlier in the week was uh, was a minute, and it was a totally different piece of the same story. You know, some more of their brainstorming. So I think it used celebrity in there really well. And let's face it, for Samsung, last year they went after Apple big time. Right. With the, the, you know, take off on people waiting in line and went after all the attributes of the of the five versus the, the galaxy and it, it actually grew their market share they're now the number one smartphone in the world and and last year's um, Super Bowl brought them up in a whole 10 points above Apple it works for them this time they were up against um, Blackberry, right? right? Blackberry right, is about yeah. to re yeah, relaunch, changing. and they were going right head to head on that, and they actually even got in front of it a couple of weeks ago by launching one that took aim at Blackberry. This one just sort of made fun of all the all the Super Bowl spots, whether it, it be pistachios and Psy, or whether it be you know even themselves using celebrity endorsement pieces. So they had a lot of fun with what was in there, and it, and for many it showed that piece of celebrity character not taking themselves too seriously. Seriously, right, right. And saying, hey, you know what? We can have a lot of fun. They, as celebrities, are winners in here also. Samsung's a winner, but they are too because it shows a different dynamic and the ability to poke fun at themselves. There was a lot of feel good last night. <laughs> Volkswagen also had a good one as well with the, with the whole Rastafarian, don't worry, man, feel good. I want to take a look at that one and get your thoughts because that definitely had that elicited emotional high that was not celebrity driven. Right. I hate Mondays. Yeah, they're the worst. No worries, man. Everything will be all right. <laughs> yeah, man. Come on. Don't fret me, brother. The sticky bun comes soon. Yeah. Wicked coffee, Mr. Jim. It still blows your mind at four million bucks. That's what you get for four million bucks, <laughs> yeah. right? And you know what? Look, they, they put <laughs> but, a but overpaid a little bit. <laughs> they put a teaser out with Jimmy Cliff earlier, uh, and it was very funny. And they played off a lot of the really funny viral people that that were, were hits during the, the course of the year. But what was interesting was when that did come out, and they teased it out there. They they put it out there early. All of a sudden, there was this backlash of people saying it was racist. And you know, it actually took the Jamaican government to come back and go, "Well, wait a second. Jamaican isn't a race, first of all. It's racist for people who call it racist because that's not who we are. <laughs> yeah. It's actually very much fun. And, and Jamaica puts themselves out there as the land of happiness and it's going to put you on island time and do all these things. So it actually resonated well. And once that, that bit of sort of trumped up controversy blew over, I think people got how much fun that was. And that's what it was meant to be. Bobby. Fun. VW's fun. And that was really what they were trying to bring Throw back to the Bobby Darren. Well, obviously not shocking the all things Super Bowl, big talking points in the world of social media. 24.1 million tweets during hashtag SB47. Five and a half million of those during Beyonce's show alone. So here alone, or here now, on all things Super Bowl, Phoebe Conley, uh, Yahoo News senior editor. Phoebe, the biggest peaks of the night on Twitter, what are they? The biggest peak was actually the blackout. That was the biggest peak, according to Twitter. Um, it, was, it was closely followed by the almost record-breaking 180-yard um, kickoff. And then um, the end of the game was, was the, big, the big third finish. The, the, obviously, so I mean, two of the, uh, well, one of the events right there, obviously having nothing to do with the game whatsoever as the 49ers were cooling down, but then obviously clearly ready to make a little bit of a comeback on there. Destiny's Child. The reunion on stage that people didn't think was going to actually happen, that seriously drove some traffic, right? People were so excited about that. And, you know, both Michelle Williams and Kelly Rowland took to Twitter as well to talk to their fans. So it was a big moment. And single ladies, not to say that I was putting a ring on it last night, Phoebe, but <laughs> I'm, that also a big one. Yes, yes. And, and also just I, people felt comfortable talking about it. It was something that everyone, you know, whether you were into the game or not, could get excited about talking about. What about the, big, what about the biggest searches on Yahoo last I night? I was just going to say, we were also tracking to see what people were looking on Yahoo. Beyonce performed quite well on searches on Yahoo, as did the Superdome. People were curious about the location, the blackout, the lights out, and then, of course, who won the game if you weren't able to tune in. Which, which was not, that blackout, which was a marketer's 
opportunity thrown right in there for that 35 minutes when half the stadium was in the was in the dark. Oreo. Yeah, you guys were talking about ads earlier, but but some brands just jumped on it in the moment, and Oreo was a great example of this. Oreo put out a tweet right as the blackout was going on and said that you you know reminded users that they could dunk their Oreos even with the lights out. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> that was brilliant. And the first lady as well, which whenever she says anything, the people listen. So the interesting thing is that both the First Lady and the President, their accounts are not always manned by themselves, but when they are, they sign their tweets with their initials. So Michelle Obama tweeted out last night congratulating Beyonce, and she signed the tweet herself. And, and, and Jay-Z, Beyonce last night, they had a tender moment, right? They, they had shared a it? great moment right when Beyonce was leaving stage. Um, the, captured, Beyonce's folks captured this great photo of the two of them hugging, and it was shared widely around the social network, including by the rapper Wale. Ah, uh, beautiful, embracing. You know, she nailed it right there. She's like, I don't care who wins the game because I'm out and so are the lights in the rest of the stadium, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Phoebe, thank you so much. Yeah, a lot of people obviously ordering on Super Bowl Sunday. A lot of us chime down on pizza. And on the phone now, we've got Chris Brandon from Domino's. Chris, how big of a night did you guys have last night? Guys, thanks so much for having us. What, what a game, what a night. And it was a, it was a great night for, for Domino's. You know, one, one of the things that, that we love is just the same as Super Bowl commercials and performances and all those things. Another thing that seems to be becoming a staple for the big game is online ordering for Domino's. So we saw about a 60% higher increase um, over a typical Sunday last night. We took about 300,000 orders online. And at any given, you know, half hour, 30 minute window, um, we were looking at over, you know, 1,000 online orders, orders during those times. So, you know, our stores were working just as hard as, as the guys on the field. And uh, so we've got some, some tuckered out uh, team members this morning, but, you know, we're always happy to make uh, Super Bowl a special night for people, and, and we appreciate people having Domino's a part of it. And Chris, I got a full disclosure, I was one of those people last night on the online ordering. It's a great app. It's fantastic. I need to talk to the delivery guy in Philadelphia, though, because he arrived just as Beyonce was taking the stage. Oh, <laughs> I don't. I, that's all right. Listen, no, we'll work on it next time. <laughs> anyway, congratulations to you guys. Glad that you guys had a very good uh, 11 million slices. That's what you guys projected that, that you were going to sell this year, right? Yeah, about 11 million slices, about two and a half million chicken wings is, is what we were anticipating. And, and we certainly had a big night and a great night. And our, man, our stores are busy, but, but they, you know, nothing makes them happier than you know, being a part of people's Super Bowl Sunday. And, and we hope that you know, we were able to provide a, a good experience for our fans and customers. Absolutely, Chris. Thank you so much. And for the, everyone else that's just sucking on those leftovers this afternoon, <laughs> right? They're going to be nursing our recovery from Super Bowl. Microwave those chicken wings. You know? <laughs> Bones out first. Darren, Matt, thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. And for everyone thank else you, that's thank at you. home licking the bottom of that seven-layer seven dip bowl, we're a little jealous. Have a great Monday, everyone.